All right, so let's look into the concept of a wireless LAN fundamental here. We look into some of the uh, configuration and understand the step on configure access point. First, we look into WLAN working process overview. So let's look into this diagram. In this diagram, I have the access controller. Then I have two access point. I have here a bunch of mobile device. I have a DHCP server. I have a switch. Uh, access switch and distribution switch and the firewall. So understand the topology first. So here we have some step. The first step here is that uh, AP onboarding. Uh, in this step, an AP obtain IP address, discover an AC and set up a connection with AC. If you still remember, we need to create this uh, tunnel. All right? So we need to create the cable tunnel between the AC and the AP. So for the AC and AP to able to communicate to each other, first you need to make sure that this AP will get the IP address from the DHCP. So DHCP will assign an IP so that the AC and AP can communicate with each other. That is step number one. In step number two, the WLAN service configuration delivery. The AC deliver WLAN service configuration to an AP. If you remember, the AC, once they have a communication with the AP through the cap web, they need to configure the AP with certain configuration. This is all the control information that the AC instruct AP follow. Then step number three, we have the STA access. STA find the SSID transmit by the AP, connect to the network and go online. So I have a mobile phone here and uh, they see that there is an SSID. So for example, I can see that SSID over here, let's say it's called Huawei. And once you connect uh, and punch in your password, you are able to connect to the network. And finally, uh, the user can access to the network. Okay, so these are generally the WLAN working process. So let's look into the step in more detail. The first one here is an AP onboarding. So in this step, the AC can manage and control feed AP. As you can see here, they say it's a feed AP, means that the AP is under the control of AC in a centralized manner and deliver service only after they go online. The procedure are as follow. First is an AP, obtain an IP address. Remember that we have this uh, uh, PoE switch when you connect to the AP, the AP now go online. One is go online is going to look for an IP address and the IP address is given by the DHCP. So step number two, the AP discover the AC and establish a cap web. Here we have a cap web established between the AC and the AP. Uh, in third step, AP access control. So now the AP already have uh, the information from the AC. If the AC uh, found out that the AP is not in the same firmware, the AP need to upgrade the firmware to match the AC firmware. And uh, number five here, we also look into the cat web tunnel maintenance because AC and AP need to have continuous communication so they have some sort of uh, heartbeat. All right, step number two here, WLAN service configuration delivery. Step number three is STA access. And step number four is WLAN service data forwarding. So this is uh, step number one. Here we look into AP obtain IP addresses. On the left hand, you can see we have a series of steps. First step here is to get the IP address allocation. Then we have a cat web tunnel establishment, AP access control. Then we have optional access point upgrade. Then we also have a cat web tunnel maintenance. So these are general steps. So first is the APs obtain IP addresses. Before the AC can communicate with AP, the AP need to have a IP address. And for us to achieve that, we need to configure the HCP. So an AP can obtain IP address in either the following mode. Either you can do a static mode. You have to log into the AP and configure statically IP address, which is a bit uh, troublesome. So uh, most of the case will prefer the HCP, where the AP serve as a DHCP client and request IP address from a DHCP server. So the keyword here is we have to configure a DHCP in the network. So what is the typical solution? deploy a dedicated DHCP uh, server to assign IP address to AP. Then we can configure the AC to assign IP address to AP. Use a device on the network such as a call switch to assign IP address to the DHCP. So in this case, 
we can make use of the call switch to become a DHCP. Regardless whichever solution that you are using, uh, we are still prefer to use the DHCP mode rather than the static mode. So let's look into the DHCP IP address allocation the theory. So we already went through this. So the AP is going to look for the DHCP. As you can see the DHCP and the AP in the same broadcast domain. So they go through the uh, discover, then we have the offer, then we have the request, and finally we have the acknowledgement. So this is just a basic DHCP address allocation for us to make sure that the AP can reach the DHCP. So we are using a layer two. So if you have a layer three, then you have to use a relay agent. Next time we look into the cat web tunnel establishment. Uh, in the earlier slide, once your AP have the IP address, then AP and AC can communicate. So in this stage, we have the uh, cat web tunnel establishment. The AC manage and control AP in a centralized manner through the cat web tunnel. So they need to form this tunnel. So there are two steps here. First is the AC discovery. The AP send a discover request packet to find an available AC because in your network, you can have more than one uh, access controller. So the AP is going to do a discover request and the AC confirm by responding. So AP can discover AC either through the following, either you can do a static AC address pre-configured in the AP, or you can do a dynamic through the DHCP, DNS, or you can use a broadcast. So again, we prefer to use a dynamic. Again, if let's say you want to have more secure, then you can specify the static so that the AP can look for the correct uh, AC. Step number two, we do a cat web uh, establishment. In stage one, once the AC discovery is done, then the second step here is to establish a cat web tunnel, including the tunnel and control. So data tunnel is to transmit the data. This is where we are using a tunneling mode. And in the tunnel, we also need to transmit control packet between uh, AC and the AP. So let's look into the detail on step number one, which is uh, AP dynamically discover the AC. Here we have a DHCP server here, and then we have a AP, which is on the uh, same network for the AP and the DHCP. The DHCP and the AC are using a layer three campus network, which is in the router network. So the AP is going to do a DHCP discover as usual, but this time DHCP uh, offer have this option 43. This option 43 consists of the AC IP address. And you can configure that on your DHCP server. AP is going to ask for the request and finally the acknowledgement of the DHCP. So this is a Dora that we learned in our previous topic. So once the AP already have this information, including the IP address and the location of AC, the AP is going to do a discover request and finally AC will respond back by using discovery response. Now they also have another scenario where the DHCP is not available and if this is in a broadcast uh, domain or in this case is a layer 2 network, AP can send this uh, discovery request to the AC directly and if this AP is authorized by the AC, either by using the sequence number or MAC address, this AC will going to uh, respond, else this AP will not able to associate with this AC. So these are the general uh, step on how the AC discover the AC. Now step number two is our cat web tunnel establishment in this stage. Here, once this AP already have the uh, connectivity with the AC, the cat web will be formed. So AP associate with the AC and establish cat web tunnel, including the data tunnel and the control tunnel. So we have to look into this uh, two part data tunnel and the control tunnel. Uh, what this means by data tunnel? Data tunnel transmit service data packet from AP to the AC for centralized forwarding. You will still remember, we have to go through like this. This is a data path going through the AC, then from the AC, we go to uh, external. This is what we call a centralized forwarding. Datagram transport layer security or DTLS encryption can be enabled over the uh, data tunnel to ensure security, which means that the camera is using UDP and this UDP will run through a uh, encryption to ensure the cat web are secure. So cat web data will be encrypted 
and decrypt by DTLS. So that is on your data tunnel. So CatWeb also have control tunnel. Control tunnel transmit control packet between AC and AP. So if this is a data, then this is a control. DTLS encrypt can be enabled over the control tunnel to ensure security of CatWeb control packet. Subsequently, CatWeb control packet will be encrypted and decrypted by DTLS. So these are the mechanisms on how the CatWeb tunnel are established. Next time we look into APSS control. In this stage, after discovering uh, an AC, the AP sent a joint request. So we have the uh, joint request sent by the AP uh, requesting to the AC. The AC then determine whether to allow the APSS to join by using the joint response. So this is a joint response. The AC support three authentication mode. Uh, just now I mentioned that we can pre-configure the MAC address in the AC. We can do a sequence number authentication or we can use a non-authentication. So these are the three methods of configuring the AP joint to the AC. Then we have a step on uh, AP upgrade, which is an optional. The AP determine whether its system software version is the same as a specified on the AC. The AC will have a list of uh, firmware. So if let's say these parameters are not the same, all right, which are different, the AP will send an image data request. So the AP is going to ask for the AC. I, I need to upgrade my image. And the uh, AC is going to respond by using image data respond. Once this respond is sent, then they can actually upgrade the firmware. So the firmware can be upgraded using uh, three method. It's either you get the image from the access controller, uh, FTP or secure FTP. Of course that if let's say you are using the AC, uh, it will be easier. But if let's say you have a lot of AP only to be upgraded, then it will be a burden to the AC. So in this case, we should actually look for either FTP or secure FTP. Now secure FTP is uh, preferred because of the encryption uh, they have on this uh, SFTP mode. So after the software version is updated, the AP will restart and go through the step number one, uh, two, and three one more time. Okay, so this is a step that is an optional. If let's say the firmware is the same, then straight away they will go into the CatWeb Tunnel Maintenance. So let's look into the CatWeb Tunnel Maintenance. So in this stage, uh, Data Tunnel Maintenance, the AP and AC exchange keep a live packet to detect the tunnel connectivity. So here you can see that we have the keep alive. All right, so the AP send a keep alive, the AC will return a keep alive. And that is for the data tunnel. And for the control, they send an echo request and the echo respond. So that is uh, the theory on how to keep the cat web tunnel. Now here we have the uh, detailed step on the configuration on the AC for the AP to go online. So these are the steps uh, follow the explanation just now that we learned. First, we need to configure uh, the network connectivity. This is where we have to configure our DHCP. Then second, we have to configure uh, AP group. This is where we are going to uh, do most of our configuration. All right, so that uh, on the subsequent slide, I'm going to show you the command. So just understand the basic concept on what are the steps for us to configure the AC so that the AP can discover the AP. Then step number three, uh, this one is important. This is because that we need to set our country code. Then step number four, we have the uh, configure the source interface or address because when you configure the AC, the AC may have multiple interface. You have to specify which interface the camera tunnel source is. So either you can use a source interface, a physical interface, or you can use the IP address. And step number five, which is an optional for you to do the uh, AP upgrade. And finally, we have step number six, which we have to add AP for the authentication mode. Now, no worry about all these steps, all the six steps here, I'm going to walk you through with all the command. So I want you to remember that these are the steps, the six steps that will go through. You need to have this in the back of your mind. So when we configure our uh, AC, later on you know uh, which step we are. Because each of these also has other sub steps. 